What up, peeps? Coming at you live from uh, this is actually the rooftop of cabin one here. It is such a beautiful day. Came out here to work on everything, and uh, I'm not getting nothing done because I'm enjoying myself. But that's all right. Uh, like those foothills. That's nice. Great sunlight today. I came up here just to kind of inspect the, the roof on this unit. And it made me uh, start thinking about uh, solar. Um, Off-grid solar in particular. Um, so there's actually two different... Well, I, I mean, yeah, there's more. But the two primary um, types of panel at least from my understanding, are polycrystalline and uh, monocrystalline. The difference between the two is the polycrystalline panels um, are optimal when you're in a um, uh, very high sunlight uh, environment. Um, if you're doing um, monocrystalline, that's more for uh, like low sunlight areas um your biggest expense is going to be um actually uh the battery bank um the technology has gotten quite a bit better um you know with the lithium batteries and so on and so forth um but uh, you're going to pay quite a quite a bit for batteries you have to have batteries you have to have a charge controller you have to have an inverter a good inverter uh, you know, like a pure sine wave that'll withstand uh, surges from um, appliances and so forth. So, but yeah, obviously start with the panel, uh, in my opinion, allegedly. Um, they're, the panels themselves are still relatively cheap, so you're going to be able to get them, as far as I can see, for about a dollar a watt. So this, for example, is a 100 watt panel uh, I have several of them connected uh, in series parallel um, and it can get you know the more you study it it becomes like kind of like headache material you know but anyway so that's the solar thing and then when I'm up here I'm looking around at how beautiful this is and, and thinking about well, what's the primary um, natural disaster threat here, and it's wildfires, um, which kind of brought me to this next point. Um, I don't even know if these are available at a reasonable price, but they used to be uh, 20 bucks. This is uh, an Israeli gas mask. This is actually pork for a, a drinking straw. Um, and you can kind of see I only have one free hand and I'm on a roof and I don't want to fall to my demise. So I won't uh, demo this, but you kind of see the structure of it. Um, I do believe some years ago I picked that up at RDD USA. Um, I know someone will go into a purity spiral in the comments like, oh, you should have this this, that, and the other thing, well, I don't know. You know. Like it or not, I think the Israelis know what the hell they're doing. Um, this, I don't know what that is. Some kind of Hebrew. But this is the, um, the canister for it. Um, that actually screws on here, like so. And then you pop this open when you're ready to use it. Um, these canisters do actually have a shelf life. Uh, let's see what this... Oh yeah, so this one is long past. I, I have others as well. But you, I think you can see the, the date there was... I mean, it's written right to left, because I suppose Hebrew or whatever. Uh, 2020. Um... And they all have, any mask you look at, whether it's Israeli or Czech or Russian or whatever, 
um, is going to have a, a rating for protection. Um, in other words, uh, you know, uh, rated for chemical, biological, uh, nuclear, whatever. Um, the thing about this that I like is, as we're talking about the, the risk of wildfires here, and, and I don't know if people really consider that, but if you get into a situation, um, obviously wildfires, you're going to need to breathe. But also think about if, you know, people just start burning stuff or fires occur. Uh, you know, it's really something to think about. Um, if things can go south pretty quickly, and if you want to get out of Dodge, you got to be able to breathe, I, I would think. But hell, what do I know? Some guy sitting on his roof.